Welcome back, my people. I'm your host, Aida Jogeli. If you are serious about drinking the purest water that is 99% free of impurities that are harmful for your health, and you want a system that is super convenient to use with hassle-free maintenance, then there is one purification method you need to know reverse osmosis. I will teach you everything you need to know about reverse osmosis so that you can make the ultimate filter setup and easily make healthy drinking water right at home. This is the next part to my complete guide to healthy drinking water. Let us begin. First, I'll explain what reverse osmosis does and how it works. Reverse osmosis filters fluids by using water pressure to push tap water through a partially permeable membrane. This semi-permeable membrane has super tiny pores, about one nanometer or even smaller in size. A nanometer is 10 to the negative nine meters, which is so small. It only allows the solvent molecules to pass. In our case, just water, pure H2O. The solutes, which are substances dissolved in the water, are too large to pass through the membrane pores. Therefore, the membrane filters them out. What kinds of substances does reverse osmosis remove? Reverse osmosis removes all minerals, coloring, cysts, turbidity, and organic and inorganic chemical contaminants. In fact, reverse osmosis is highly effective in removing bacteria and viruses. Any unwanted ions and molecules that the membrane filters goes out into the drain. That's right, reverse osmosis systems do not require daily maintenance. With our reverse osmosis unit, you don't have to do any scrubbing to dispose of the impurities. Compare that to a distiller. <laughs> What a relief. The pressure pushes the pollutants automatically out the drain tube and into the drain pipe. Or you could collect that water and use it for other purposes like uh, flushing your toilet. Why do we call it reverse osmosis? We call it reverse osmosis because it's opposite to what wants to happen in nature. Solvents naturally want to move from a place of low solute concentration to an area of high solute concentration. This continues until the concentration is the same on either side. This is the natural process of osmosis. But what if you manually put energy into the system? Apply water pressure in the reverse direction and you can overcome the natural tendency of osmosis. Push the solvent water from a place of high solute concentration to an area of low solute concentration. Now you've done reverse osmosis. It's the principle behind how RO water filtration systems work. How much energy does reverse osmosis require? Reverse osmosis does not require any power to function. It works solely with water pressure. As a result, there are no electrical hazards or electricity costs to using a reverse osmosis system. What does reverse osmosis not remove? Reverse osmosis is not effective to remove volatile organic contaminants, VOCs, and pesticides. So to make an efficient RO filtration system, you'll need to add an activated carbon filter. Reverse osmosis systems need an activated carbon filter. The first reason is that activated carbon is the best and sometimes the only treatment health organizations recommend to remove volatile organic contaminants and pesticides. Second reason is because if you were to pass water solely through an RO membrane, the RO membrane would get worn out pretty quickly. The tiny pores would catch everything, large and small, and plug up fast. So to extend the life of the membrane, it's beneficial to use a pre-filter. Carbon filters can have a nominal pore size of one micron. That is 1,000 times bigger than an RO membrane. That makes carbon filters a good fit to use as a pre-filter. For these two reasons, activated carbon filters are essential for RO systems. In case the pre-filter happens to miss out on any contaminants, RO systems also use activated carbon as a final stage post-filter which can be considered redundant, but it ensures that taste and odor is improved. Maintenance-wise, you'll need to replace both pre and post activated carbon filter cartridges annually. A new set can cost about $37. 
On a side note, you can think of a simple faucet mount filter or even a water bottle with a filter as a one stage filtration system. The one and only stage being a carbon filter. Remove dirt, sand, and large particles with a sediment pre-filter. Have you noticed any sand or dirt in your water? Any particles floating around or particles settling at the bottom? If you do, then you'll need a sediment pre-filter. A sediment filter will remove over 85% of particles of a size 5 microns or larger. Comparatively, the size of sediment particles are 5 times bigger than the pores in carbon filters. Those large visible particles would wear out the carbon pre-filter pretty quickly. Most city water won't have this problem. But if you do, then you'll need a sediment pre-filter before the activated carbon pre-filter. I won't have that problem since I get municipal water. But I would like to have an extra filter cartridge housing just to have the flexibility of adding additional pre-filters in the future. If you use a sediment pre-filter, you'll need to replace it annually. But fortunately, they are probably the cheapest of any kind of filter you can get. They cost around $16 each. You can see the price trend here. The smaller the particle size we wish to remove, the higher the cost to filter it out. Differences between reverse osmosis membranes. There are different kinds of reverse osmosis membranes. The technical difference is how much total dissolved solids, TDS, the membranes filter out and how much water is wasted in the process. For instance, a 24 GPD film tech membrane will filter out 98% of TDS but waste 4 cups of water for every cup of purified water produced, hence having a 4 to 1 waste ratio. On the other hand, a 50 GPD Pentec GRO membrane will filter out 96% of TDS and only waste one cup of water for every cup produced, thus having a better one-to-one -one waste ratio. Which GPD flow rate is best? The flow rate, which is measured in gallons per day, GPD, also differs among the two. A 50 GPD membrane has a higher flow rate than a 24 GPD membrane. But if you are using a water storage tank, then you won't notice the difference in flow. How do a 96% TDS versus 98% TDS removal compare? Recall earlier in the blog when I tested my tap water, it had a reading of 98 parts per million, 98 ppm. If I have a 96% TDS removal, that would leave only 4 parts per million in my purified water. On the other hand, a 98% TDS removal would leave only 2 parts per million in my purified water. Which is insanely soft water, considering that the EPA recommends, but does not enforce, a TDS level of 500 parts per million. Among the two membranes mentioned, the difference in water savings is astounding, compared to the almost negligible difference in purity. So it depends on what you're willing to trade off. A higher water bill today, or depending on your water quality, a potentially higher medical bill in the future. I'm gonna take a chance and start off with a one-to-one -one efficiency RO membrane. Perhaps I'll experiment with other membranes in the future. Maintenance of reverse osmosis membranes. Say you are using a sediment pre-filter as necessary and have a activated carbon pre-filter in place. In that situation, a reverse osmosis membrane should last about 3 to 5 years before needing a replacement. You can tell when the membrane needs replacement when you see a noticeable change in your TDS reading. Other than that, you may need to lubricate the O-rings in the vessels with silicone grease when replacing the membrane cartridge. The cost for a RO membrane with a 1 to 1 ratio is about $75, which would equate to spending about $25 per year. Say you wish to decrease this annual cost, but spend more on your water bill with a 4 to 1 ratio RO membrane that costs $54 each. The yearly expense would be about $18 per year. Considering that most people do not need a sediment pre-filter, which costs $16 per year, the yearly recurring maintenance for an RO system with a carbon pre and post filter, which costs $37 per year, and the cheaper RO membrane, which would be $54 for three years, would sum up to be about $55 per year total annual maintenance cost. I'm definitely attracted to the idea of just setting it up and never having to touch the system. Except to replace the filters once a year. I want to set up as many routine aspects of my life on 
automatic. That way I can have more free time for more creative endeavors. Under sink versus countertop reverse osmosis water filters. There are essentially two configurations for an in-home RO system. You can get a compact countertop option, which as the name suggests, sits on top of your kitchen cabinet. The countertop RO has a compact design. So for space saving purposes, it does not have a water tank. The water tank is useful for storing already filtered water. This is because the RO filter can only flow so much water through the membrane at a time. Low pressure makes the flow straight out of the membrane very weak. Do you have the mighty strong patience to leave a water bottle filling up while you multitask nearby? If so, then this countertop option could be for you. For about twice the cost, another configuration is the under sink option. It is bulkier, but it includes a water storage tank. With a water tank, you can store filtered water so it's readily available when you need it. As a consequence, you'll get higher pressure and faster flow when you open the faucet. This under sink configuration is not that much harder to install or maintain. For this reason, I think the under sink configuration is the most convenient option in the long run. Time is money after all. How much does it cost to install a reverse osmosis system? Professional plumbers can charge a very hefty fee to install an under sink or countertop RO option basically whatever they can get away with. Most reverse osmosis systems are actually pre-built, wow. requiring little assembly, which makes it ridiculously easy to install. At first glance, the installation can look complicated, but if another human can do it, so can you. Save the headache of hiring someone else's time and use a fraction of what that would have cost to get any common household tools you need to install it. It pays off to do it yourself. You acquire a new skill, you feel proud of yourself, and you feel satisfied that you can troubleshoot issues in the future. My principle to save money in the long run is the following. If you're gonna own something, then you must be willing to take on all responsibility for it, ideally without passing it on to others. The exception would be if you are financially independent and can afford the luxury or if you can use that time to make more money than you would have spent having someone else do it. If you are feeling uncomfortable with the installation and maintenance, have no fear, I does here. In my next post, I'll walk you through step-by-step step through the RO installation process. Have zero TDS water with a deionizing filter cartridge. Say you're not satisfied with a reverse osmosis that removes only 98% TDS. You want perfection. You want the best. You're looking to bump it up with the maximum 100% TDS removal. Then a deionizing filter cartridge is what you need to get that ultra pure zero TDS water. The idea is to deionize the water. That means to remove all remaining dissolved ionized solids. You can achieve this by swapping any positively charged ions with hydrogen ions, H+, and switching negatively charged ions with hydroxyl ions, OH-. When that replacement happens, it creates a new water molecule, H2O. The deionizing filter contains a mixed bed resin consisting of two ion exchange resins in the same cartridge. When the reverse osmosis water passes through the DI filter, all that is left is pure water with zero TDS. If a deionizing filter is used in combination with a reverse osmosis system, then the DI filter can last up to a year before you need to replace it. Replacement runs for about $29 per DI cartridge. Is zero TDS water necessary? It is certainly the best you can do to be sure that you are drinking nothing but pure H2O. But I wouldn't stress over it if it's outside of your budget. Isn't it ridiculous that you even have to pay more money to drink toxin-free water? The better thing you can do, regardless of whatever industry you're in, is to be environmentally conscious. Please make decisions that do not pollute the water in the first place. Thanks in advance. Remineralize and balance pH of purified water with calcium. As you can see, with a reverse osmosis filtration system, you can't pick and choose what stays and what goes. Oh, this mineral is good, let's keep it. Oh, that one's toxic, uh, let's filter that one out. Ideally, I would want H2O plus the good minerals minus the harmful ones. A reverse osmosis system basically filters out 
anything larger than a water molecule. But what you can do is selectively reintroduce a mineral you wish to add to the water. Say you could reintroduce any mineral you want and make healthy drinking water with added minerals. Which mineral would that be? A good choice could be calcium. You can remineralize water with calcium using a calcite cartridge. Calcium, by the way, is an essential nutrient for many of our body functions, from our blood to our muscles to our bones and teeth. It also gives water a pleasant taste. Calcite is a form of calcium carbonate, but the most efficient way for our bodies to absorb calcium is by taking it with food. People that take calcium carbonate supplements tend to experience gastrointestinal side effects, especially those who don't spread it out with meals. Since we consume most of the calcium we need from food anyways, I would not consider the nutritional benefit a huge reason to get a calcite filter. Another effect of adding calcium to the water is that calcium raises is the pH of reverse osmosis water. The pH increases from slightly acidic to a neutral pH of 7.0. Wait, hold on. Why purified water does not have a perfectly neutral pH? In theory, yes, isolated purified water does have a pH of 7.0, but science isn't so straightforward. There's more going on that tips the scale to slightly acidic. For this reason, we need to dive into what a pH scale is telling us. Let's look at the case of purified water. Neutral pH occurs when the concentration of hydrogen ions, H+, equals the concentration of hydroxyl ions, OH-. Now zoom in to see what molecules of water, H H2O are up to. They are constantly separating into forms like H+, OH-, and H3O+, and then bonding into water again. If there were more free H+, ions, then the water would be more acidic. But if we added OH-, then that would combine with the free H+, making the water neutral again. Now, what happens when you expose purified water to air? The water molecules will absorb a carbon dioxide molecule. Instantly, they react to form a bicarbonate and a hydrogen ion, which is equivalent to carbonic acid. Hence, purified water tends to have an acidic pH scale reading when exposed to air. On a side note, this is also related to the reason why we say it's raining acid rain. The rain that falls comes in contact with pollutants in the air and becomes acidic. Which brings us back to the calcite cartridge. Flow purified water through it to balance the pH level from slightly acidic to a neutral pH of 7.0. This is why a calcite cartridge is sometimes called a pH filter or an alkaline remineralization filter. By the way, a calcite cartridge costs around $22 to replace. After better understanding pH levels, it makes me wonder, what is the best pH for healthy drinking water, alkaline or acidic? The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, recommends but does not enforce a pH level of 6.5 to 8.5. They wrote this guideline mainly to avoid people from drinking water that tastes or smell bad, which could eventually lead you to stop drinking public water at all. It's important to realize that the pH level is telling us the relative concentration of acids to bases in a solution. Therefore, it is not a clear indicator of whether the water quality is good or bad for your health. Drinking slightly acidic or even basic water, also known as alkaline water, could be just fine for you. But that would really depend on the chemistry of the water, exactly what compounds are in it. After learning all this, I personally would not get a calcite cartridge for my first RO system configuration. It does not seem to be a big necessity and it only adds to the cost and the complexity of the unit. Filters for other water problems. There are a myriad of contamination problems water can have, and there are many kinds of filters that can make it easier to remove certain kinds of toxins. For example, if you have elevated levels of arsenic in your water, you could consider getting a Philox cartridge. First off, a RO system with carbon filters is already very effective in removing certain kinds of arsenic, but you can make it easier to remove other kinds of arsenic if you pre-treat the water through a Philox cartridge. Pre-treating will oxidize certain forms of arsenic so that the RO membrane can remove it more effectively. The downside to adding a Philox cartridge is that it significantly slows down the water flow. The Philox cartridge is so dense that it could even bring the water flow to a halt. Plus, it might last 
less than a year and cost around $32 to replace. What is the best reverse osmosis system for the home? Keep it simple. The best reverse osmosis system will include at a minimum three filtration stages, a reverse osmosis membrane and a activated carbon pre and post filter. Out in the market, you'll find reverse osmosis systems with anywhere from two to seven filtration stages. For example, this popular and decently priced six stage RO system. And more doesn't mean necessarily better, but it does mean more money, more time, more space and more complicated maintenance. In most cases, reverse osmosis is better for you than drinking unknown pollutants in tap water. However, before going all out on the most complex RO system, check your local water treatment plant's consumer confidence report, CCR, to determine your water quality, and then move forward with buying what you need. How will I purify water at home? Okay, after all this work, after everything I've learned so far, I've made a decision. I've decided to upgrade to a reverse osmosis system. I'm gonna install it. With unwavering diligence, I'm gonna power through every step until I solve this next problem because that is how we do things here at Jogeli. Technology is always evolving and so is my knowledge. So if I implement a different, better solution, I'll keep you updated. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to stay tuned for the latest videos. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and tell me, what water treatment process are you using and how is it working for you? If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below or join the discussion over at the Jogeli Community Forum. I'm Ida Jogeli, thanks for learning with me today and I'll see you next time. That's all folks. One last thing, if you'd like to help support more frequent, in-depth research videos that can help you in your daily life, head over to patreon.com slash and join today. Muchas gracias.